day everybody and once again we are back together and this time we're going to be looking at how to determine the percentage yield so if you have not subscribed just make sure you're part of the family and of course you can get in touch with us with any help in maths and science our details are on the description of this video all right now let's get right into our lesson now whenever we talk about percentage yield so in this case we know that percentage will always be a number that you get out of a hundred. So if we say that percentage yield, in this case, we are looking at just the ratio between the actual yield as well as the theoretical yield. Now I'm going to explain this just a, in just a while. Okay, so, but this ratio is always out of a hundred percent. Well, out of a hundred. So in this case, you multiply that by 100. Of course, the closer your ratio is to 100, um, in this case, the, the better, right? Because it then means that your actual amount is as close as possible to your theoretical amount. Now, let me just make an example. Suppose that we're using flour and sugar to make muffins, right? So here we are, we're trying to bake these muffins and we know that we need both flour and sugar. Now, let's say that the amount of sugar is sufficient, meaning that the amount of sugar is in excess, right? The moment we see this word excess, what does it mean? It means that the flour is actually the one that is limiting the extent of the re reaction. We call it our limiting reagent, right? So now that means that if this reaction is going to stop or if we are going to stop pre, uh, producing muffins, it will be because we have run out of flour, right? That's what we mean by the limiting reagent. Now, I want you to imagine, let's say that the amount of flour that we have, you know, whatever the uh, amount that we've got, let's just say two kilograms of flour, all right? Theoretically, would actually produce about 40 muffins, right? So, but in this case, what happens is that, you know, during the course of baking, some of the flour perhaps maybe spills, uh, perhaps you burn some of the muffins, you know, your muffins get burnt and so on. So let's just theoretically say we're meant to get 40 muffins, but we end up getting, let's just say, 28 muffins, right? Sure, that's not a good number. Okay, so now this is the actual number that we got given the flower that we were given. But in this case, we know that theoretically we're meant to obtain 40 muffins. So now to calculate the percentage yield, what we will say is that, well, this is the theoretical yield, which is actually, uh, actually, it's the actual yield, which is 28 muffins, divided by the theoretical yield, which is 40, and that would be multiplied by 100 in order to turn that ratio into a percentage. Right, so we're going to say 28 divided by 40, right, we get 70, right? Uh, if you want to, we can multiply that by 100. So that gives us uh, 70%. So our actual yield in this case, or our percentage yield rather, would be 78%. Now, let's learn or rather let's see how to apply this when it comes to chemistry. And I'm sure we'll have lots and lots of fun doing so. They say 1.4 grams of nitrogen mixed with 0 0.6 grams of hydrogen and ammonia NH3 is formed. The balanced equation for the chemical reaction taking place is N2 plus 3H2 giving us 2NH3. As the first question, they say calculate the theoretical mass of ammonia that is produced. Now, ladies and gents, it's important for this question to first establish which one is our limiting reagent. And now remember that in chemistry, we work with number of moles. So let's first establish which one is the limiting reagent. So I'm going to say number of moles, going to start with nitrogen, right? This is going to be mass 
divided by the molar mass of hydrogen. Okay, so this is going to give me a uh, nitrogen rather. Uh, so this is going to be uh, the mass is 1.4 grams divided by now remember from your periodic table that nitrogen is given as 14 so this is we've got two nitrogens and uh, nitrogen atoms right so please keep that in mind we've got two nitrogen atoms there so which means we will multiply by by two right so this would be two multiplied by 14 which is the molar mass okay so what would that give us that would give us well let's actually calculate it i think that would give us 0 0.05 1.4 divided by uh, 2 times 14 which is 28 right and so that gives us 0 0.05 moles so these are the number of moles of nitrogen that we have right but let's also find out the number of moles of hydrogen so that we can determine the limiting reagent. So molar mass, uh, mass divided by molar mass of hydrogen. Okay, so this will be uh, the mass of hydrogen given is 0 0.6 divided by the molar mass. Once again, ladies and gents, the molar mass of hydrogen, right? We've got two atoms of hydrogen. Now, please remember, uh, guys, you do not multiply by the coefficient of that um, molecule, right? So in this case, we've got H2. So that tells us we've got two atoms of hydrogen. So this will be two times the molar mass of hydrogen is one from our periodic table. So we're going to have 0 0.6 divided by two, and that will give us 0 0.3 moles. All right, ladies and gents, so which means that one would be a limiting reagent and the other one would be in excess. Now, what you need to, de uh, to remember is that it is the limiting reagent that will determine the yield or that would determine the mass of the products that are formed, right? So I think that uh, a nitrogen would be a limiting reagent, but let's find that out, right? So let's just say for argument's sake, with the number of moles of hydrogen that we've got, of nitrogen rather, right? We know that for every one mole of nitrogen, and please, if you don't know how to do this yet, uh, please just watch my previous videos uh, on stoichiometry, right? And they will show you how to go about doing this. So for every one mole of nitrogen, I get three, or rather I use three of hydrogen, Right, so if I use 0 0.05 moles of nitrogen, right, how many moles of nitrogen, of hydrogen rather, would I use? Right, so let's cross multiply. So n times 1, that would give me n. 0 0.05 multiplied by 3, that would give me 0 0.15 moles. Right, so in order for nitrogen to be our limiting reagent, right, we only need 0 0.15 moles of, um, of hydrogen. But how many do we have? How much do we have? We actually have 0 0.3. So we have more than what we need, right? So as a result, that simply means that hydrogen is in excess. Why? Because it's got more than what we need. And so therefore, it means that nitrogen is our limiting reagent okay right so now now that we know what which one is the limiting reagent so we can now determine the theoretical yield of uh, ammonia right and how are we going to do that we use our limiting reagent Right, our limiting reagent is nitrogen. So for every one mole of nitrogen, I will produce two moles of ammonia. Now, please remember, we get this from our reaction, right? So in this case, for every one of nitrogen, we get two moles of uh, ammonia. And please keep in mind, ladies and gents, that that's the only time that we use those ratios, right? And not when you're calculating the molar mass. So now, 
how much nitrogen do we have in moles? So that's 0 0.05. And I want to know how much ammonia are we going to produce? Right, let's cross multiply yet again. So n times 1, remember you only multiply the coefficients, right? 0 0.05 times 2 will give me 0 0.1 moles of ammonia. Right, now we know that the amount of ammonia would be 0 0.1 moles, but remember our question was to calculate the theoretical mass. So therefore, right, to get the mass, or rather let's say number of moles is mass divided by the molar mass. So this would be 0 0.1, which is the number of moles. We want the mass. But we know what should be the molar mass for ammonia. So note, ammonia is one nitrogen and three hydrogens. And please remember, you do not multiply by the coefficient. So one nitrogen, that's 14 grams per mole, plus three times hydrogen. So that's three times one. Okay, and what happens with the mass? Right, we cross multiply. So we've got 17 multiplied by 0 0.1, okay? And that would give us 1.7 grams. So the mass of ammonia that we produce theoretically should be 1.7 grams. So remember this amount tells us about the theoretical yield, okay? Now, let's go to the next question. We found out what's the theoretical mass of ammonia, right? Now they say to us, if 1.62 grams of ammonia are formed, calculate the percentage yield. So which means now we've got the actual mass that is produced, right? Which is 1.62. Theoretically, we wanted to produce 1.7. So we're going to say... Well, the percentage yield would be equal to the theoretical mass or rather the actual mass divided by the theoretical mass. All right. And remember, we multiply this by 100 so that we get a percentage. So we had 1.62, that was the actual one, divided by 1.7, and we multiply that by 100. And let's see what we get. We get 1.62 uh, divided by 1.7. All right, and we multiply that by 100. So that gives us a percentage yield of 95 point, uh, well, let's say 95.3% if we were uh, asked to have our answer in one decimal form. Um, so in this case, we'd have 95.3%. All right, and remember, the closer it is to 100, the better. So which means this is quite a good yield um, in in you know in theoretical terms all right so that is how you calculate the percentage yield ladies and gents so i will leave it there all right i hope that you were able to understand and follow on and guys any problems that you've got on chemistry we can always be there to assist you all right just uh, give us a shout all the details will be on the description of this video. I'll leave it there for now. I'll see you guys again next time. Shop, shop.